It's great to be back here and see so many shareholders in the room. And yes, we do have a really exciting story, and I think we're starting to get the market attention that, uh, that we haven't got to this point, and it's largely because of the success of our team and the hard work we've put in over the last five years. This cover image shows our project area, nice low rolling topography. Uh, what we do envision here is a potential open pit heap leach mine, and the nearest comparable to keep in your mind is, of course, Victoria Gold, which is the newest mine built uh, in, uh, in Canada, in, in the Yukon. Oh, there it is working. Um, and that's uh, kind of what we envision. You know, we've heard Integra, they had their three million ounce reserves. You know, that three, two to three million is kind of the economic threshold that you need to get to. And I think shareholders are, are starting to see that, that we're getting there. Forward looking statements. I will be making some forward looking statements. We're in a really exciting time for us. So do check out our website. Um, for those. I don't know what's going on with this remote, but it's doing something all by itself. <laughs> no distraction at all there. All right, so very similar to other stories you've heard today, what are our strategic advantages? Multi-million ounce potential, um, that threshold, economic threshold that I spoke about. I believe our project in the near term um, has the potential for five to six million ounces in the areas that we're exploring. Uh, our team has a great track record of success. We are a next generation explorer. We like to think we're doing all of the ESG things right from the start, which uniquely positions this project. We're right next to two producing mines. This is, I think, Canada's next mining district. We have exceptional infrastructure, roads, power, uh, cell phone service right on our property. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But that is a huge advantage for any project. We're considered a brownfield. This is uh, highway traveling right Right through it. And this is a tier one jurisdiction. You can permit a project in this jurisdiction. I have two mines that have been permitted in the last few years, which show that and give us a template for how to get through this permitting process. And a very solid First Nation, which we work with and we many of their businesses supply us. That's a huge advantage. And we're year-round exploration. 11-month exploration season. We started uh, January 26th this year and ended in December 20th. That's a huge advantage and lets us really advance this project very, very quickly and have continuous new flow for our shareholders. Our maiden resource was put out in 2020, 900,000 ounces, very similar to the grades of Victoria Gold, and we've certainly come a long way since then. If the remote works, so oh, there we go. Our leadership team and management team, we have the, the breadth of experience uh, across from exploration, mining, capital markets, legal and financial, certainly positioned for success as we move forward into this year and happy to talk more about everyone's experience when you come and visit us at the booth or check out our website. And as Gwen said, our share price has been uh, showing some increase as we've been put out steady news flow showing our progress uh, and talking to shareholders, in fact, reaching 52-week highs in the last two weeks of up to 48 cents. We're buoyed by some really strong shareholders at last financing, and in fact, our last three financings have all been without warrants, so we have no warrants outstanding. Uh, our largest shareholders are Victoria Gold at 13% and Franklin Gold and Precious Metals, along with the Cisco Development, so a couple mine builders in there, but also very strong institutional support. In that last financing, there were 18, or eight subscription agreements only uh, without warrants. So, and you'll notice that I put in a half a million in that uh, financing, and I'm a 5.5% shareholder, so that means I've invested 8.5% $850,000 in the last 18 months. So um, that's where my money is, and uh, I'm betting on our team and this property. Um, and I'm the third CEO, so there wasn't any founder stock for me. So I started making my investments when I became the CEO in August of 2016. You can see we're starting to get the attention of analysts. We have one uh, analyst who's got a price target on us at 55 cents, which we're coming up on fast. Um, and with over $8 million in the bank, we're really well positioned for this year. I've got three drills out there drilling today, uh, which is uh, pretty pretty nice to have them not only secured, but uh, getting fabulous productivity. So my thanks to the, the drillers and the team. Yukon's a great jurisdiction. It's a jurisdiction where you can permit. It's a jurisdiction where majors are starting to look to make investments. This is very significant for any project that we're in a secure jurisdiction uh, where mining is supported.
Our nearest comparable, Victoria Gold, remember their grade in their feasibility study of 0.63, the recoveries of 74%, low strip ratio one to one. We envision a deposit very similar to that. You can see our initial resource there, the deepest part of the pit in that resource from 2020 was 200 meters. So again, low strip ratio, mineralization right from surface. And we believe that our grade uh, is similar to theirs. In fact, if you increase the cutoff grade by 50%, the ounces go down by less than 15%, but the grade goes up to 0.65 and it remains a pit constrained deposit. But all of that's about to change because we've drilled 40 kilometers since that resource and we're planning a resource update in Q2 and I think that's what's driving market excitement. You can see the fabulous infrastructure in this image. Uh, main highway right through it, which the Yukon government has committed to spending $63 million upgrading starting this year. That will be a very significant benefit for us. That new power line was just energized, that you see right through the image there, was just energized in January of 21. It's a 138 kilo kilowatt line and it's only energized to half its capacity until there's additional customers. That's a huge benefit. And as I said, even cell phone service and fiber optic right out to Victoria Gold's mine. So this is our project area, just a small area of it, four by five kilometers of the 173 kilometers that we have here, and in fact, almost 300 kilometers in the district. Um, lots of colors here. The orange is that pit outlines of the original resource. The blue is the new mineralization footprint that we think we've drilled out. The green dots are what we plan to drill this year, and everything else uh, is uh, assays are either pending or we've already released the results. Lots of excitement here, three target areas. The one on the top is our airstrip resource where the bulk of the mineralization was in the first resource. Uh, to the south is the power line and Oryx Hill a little bit further to the east. We believe both of those are have uh, the potential for additional near surface resources and, and that'll be where the bulk of the resource upgrade is. We're seeing a, a higher grade mineralization trend east-west. This slide is just showing you an area through that east-west corridor where we believe we have higher grade right near surface. In fact, some 1.73, 1.53, 1.2, all right near surface. Uh, this is what we're following up on right now. We have two drills positioned off to the east, drilling that off, and one drill to the west, looking to expand that. Um, and expect lots of news flow from that. Here's just another image. You know, we have a huge target area yet to explore. You can see off to the east, we have a 10 kilometers gold and soil anomaly. We've barely scratched the surface with our drilling there, drilling about 0.25 of a kilometer there uh, squared, which, you know, is, is really just a fraction of the area. We think we now actually have a district scale corridor through here. We can see this unit, the pink uh, that goes through Powerline and Oryx Hill represent a more resistive host unit, which is hosting the mineralization. And we can actually see that now over 16 and a half kilometers. And, and certainly it corresponds with that east-west corridor that we're continuing to drill off. So expect lots of good results as we continue to step out east and west. Metallurgy is super important for any project. We know that Victoria Gold's life of mine recovery was 74. We've done initial bottle rolls on pulps, came back with 90% from both our oxide and sulfide at both our airstrip and power line. This is very encouraging initial results, but we followed up with column leach tests as well as a grain size analysis and in anticipation of starting our PA in the fall. Uh, and this work will be ongoing throughout this year, but very encouraging. And you can see while we have a sulfide, the images there show suggest that the sulfide is actually the host rock and we can see the gold intruding in fractures along with pyrotite uh, through that sulfide in, in both of those two images. So uh, lots more work to come but very encouraging that this is potentially an open pit heap leach mine. Any explorer now needs to be a next generation ex explorer doing the ESG thing part right. Uh, we believe we are doing that. We've repermitted our project this last year for another eight years and had very supportive comments from the First Nation. Uh, we've started our baseline environmental work. You need three years uh, in order to permit in the Yukon. We're already two years into ours, so that gives us an advantage and really helps de-risk this project as we move it forward. Our charity that we work very hard with, every student every day, and we've been doing this for 10 years, or I've been involved in the charity for 10 years and given over, over $1.5 million. We're ramping up our efforts for that in response to COVID and the impacts on, on education, and, and we're very proud of that work that we're doing. 
we're starting to get ready for that PEA that we're going to start in the fall. Yes, we have that resource update coming Q2, which will be very exciting. But we also need to, to think beyond that and start the baseline work that needs to be done to prepare for that PEA, which we plan to have completed by to December 31st, 2023. We're building the team and making sure we've done the work for that. And of course, we have a direct comparable right down the road, Victoria Gold's actual cost to build, uh, which of course they reached commercial production in 2020, and their actual all-in cost cost as uh, something certainly to help us. You know, we also have a secondary project down in Southeast Yukon, which is what we had when I became the CEO. Uh, it's also a look-alike potential open pit heap leach mine project, a very exciting um, project also down in Southeast Yukon. I believe we're perfectly positioned for a re-rate. We are adding ounces with our drill program, expect that resource update, but we're also de-risking this project with ESG, metallurgy, the work that, uh, that we're doing into that, as well as being in a, a really preferred jurisdiction where you can permit project and have fabulous infrastructure. It's a perfect time for a re-rate uh, for Banyan, and I think we're starting to see that. We'll have lots of catalysts, that Q2 resource, as well as our continued news flow throughout uh, 2020.